Is Hugh Freeze the man to lead Auburn back to national prominence in a national championship? In your mind, right now, today, would you say you feel confident that he is that guy? 100%. 100% he is that guy. And and look, Nick Saban leaving helps. But but I think Hugh Freeze was was going to get Auburn back to – you know where where Auburn fans feel like they belong, right? And, and look, this year he doesn't. Auburn doesn't have to be the conversation this year. They just need to be in the conversation this year because he is he is building that roster kind of old school, right? Right. Not as much from the transfer portal. He talked about it. Um, he wants to develop high school players. I think there's a good balance in between. You know, not building the whole ship out of the transfer portal, but plugging holes in the ship with the transfer portal. A lot of it is up front, right? And then you look at Peyton Thorne. You know, you got to get the quarterback position right. Uh, you get that position right. Uh, Auburn, you know, s- schematically can be good enough. They'll have good enough personnel around them. I mean, you look at the wide receiver class that they just signed. I think they're getting better up front continuously, especially from the pass rush standpoint. That's a, That's been a place where Auburn has had to improve on. So, yeah, I, I do think Hugh Freeze is going to get Auburn back to where they're nationally relevant again, where, where it's not just a, you know, hope isn't a plan, right? That That's not everybody hopes. And wishes, you know, there's been shooting stars. I've, I've wished upon like it's a Disney movie. But at the end of the day, you've got to go out and do it. Like the J-Boy show wouldn't have started if I didn't go out and do it. Crane and Company wouldn't have started if I didn't go out and do it. I could sit here and hope. You know, you can hope in one hand and do something else in the other and see which one fills up faster. At some point, you've got to step over that threshold. And I think Hugh Freeze has enough dog in him. And I think he's put a good enough staff around him. And Auburn's a place. I mean, it's shown you you can win there. So, yeah, I think 100%. I mean, you had Georgia on the ropes, and really you blew it against Bama, if we're going to be honest, last year with what should be the worst team that Hugh Freeze has at Auburn. Jake, do you feel like Auburn fans, and you can say whether this is justified or or maybe over the top or whatever, do do you feel like Auburn fans look at what Nick Saban did at Bama and feel like that should be Auburn football, like Auburn should be able to go on that type of run or similar to it? Maybe not that exact thing, but – a, like be the dominant force in college because it's like if my neighbor down the road can do it like why can't we do it to your point you just made yeah uh, look I, I think a lot of of top tier fan bases uh, of schools that have, have shown that they can do it believe believe that hey well you know if Alabama can do it then Auburn can do it we're right here with them we I've, you know I've watched Auburn win a national championship I watched Auburn play for another one now I always say you know the standard the standard should never be lowered, but sometimes reality should be accepted. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to see, and if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be Kirby Smart in Georgia, but I think asking anybody to try and recreate what Nick Saban did, if not for the fact of what Nick Saban just told you, you don't have the control that Nick Saban had over it anymore. So it's very hard to make a dynastical run. And let's not forget, Chris, Bama didn't win one the last three years. You know, Bryce Young didn't sniff one. So we, at some point, you know, yeah, it was an incredible run. Nick Saban is the greatest college football coach of all time. But even he, in the last three years, wasn't able to hold up the, the crystal ball at the end. So, yeah, fans will – look, fans short for fanatical. Um, that's why That's why I, I find it funny, now that the SEC is really good at basketball, to watch, like, SEC fans that are used to, like, football, like, oh, no. Like, we lost two regular season games. Like, it's a disaster. It's the worst. Really not understand that, like, in basketball, like, dude, 23 and 7 is really good. It's really, really, really good because we're just not used to it, right? But, yeah, look, um, it, you can't sit here and think you're not as good as somebody else, right? Because the minute you do that, you're screwed anyway. You got to go in every fight thinking you're going to win. Now, is, is reality in your corner? But like we're talking about fan bases, man. That there's there again, it's short for fanatical. There's nothing real uh about it other than you just, you know, you hope real hard. I guess that's the only thing that's real. Now, Jake, obviously, one of the things I love about you is you're an Auburn man, but obviously you're a straight shooter. So when I pre- when I pose this to you, you'll tell me if I'm crazy or not, because I, I feel like the conversation, you know, it's fun right now to project and predict and and way too early predictions and and talk about dark horses and underrated teams. You know, LSU, Tennessee, those types of teams we're talking about as as these could be teams that are kind of on the fringe competing for a playoff. If you really want to take a shot in the dark, why not the Auburn Tigers in 2024? If they can get, if Hugh Freeze can work magic, dial some things up, and turn Peyton Thorne into a much better version than what he was last year, but if they can get the most out of the quarterback position, you know, you look at Auburn last year, 
they're a couple plays away from beating, you know, Alabama and Georgia. Should have beaten Alabama, bottom line. Um, could Auburn be a dark horse playoff contender this year? Uh, here's what I'll say. First off, we're all a fan of somebody. If, if somebody acts like they're not a fan of somebody or won't tell you like who they're a fan of, like number one, I don't trust you. Number two, I think you should be federally investigated. The, the thing is, I mean, you know, Auburn hadn't sent me a check yet. Like I, I don't get paid from, from Auburn. And even if they did pay me, I would tell you the truth about it either way. Um, but look, here's what I'll say. Uh, I don't trust Peyton Thorne. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. And you know, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I watched Jason Campbell make a transformation going into year four that was unlike anything I had seen really at that position, but he had Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown and Ben Obamanu and Devin Aaron Mashadu and a really good offensive line, and and we can go down the list. That defense was insane too. Uh, and and I think Jason Campbell's a one-of-a-kind person, it, it, and he always had that ability in him. With Peyton Thorne, I, I just don't see the consistency. I think he's just a better-looking DJU, if we're going to be honest. Uh, now, you talk about Auburn this year. Um, you got to go to Georgia. you got to go to Bama. Now, I think they should start out 5-0, and uh, and you're going to hear that hype train get rolling. Your first five games are at home. Uh, you're going to get uh, our Oklahoma in their first SEC road game with Jackson Arnold with, with a young quarterback there coming into Jordan-Hare. And we all know that the voodoo witchcraft that happens – you know, in the Indian burial ground slash pet cemetery that is Jordan Hare Stadium. Um, be be a contender, right? To to have a chance down the stretch to maybe sneak in there as an at large. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a legitimate conversation. Now they're gonna go as Peyton Thorne goes because Walker White, you know, I, I really like his future. You know, I think he's got a chance, but if you're depending on a, a true freshman quarterback in the SEC that just added Texas and Oklahoma to come in and, and take the world over, that that's a very tall task. Um you know, you might as well just be in Dune too and try it. But it's at this point a contender in the conversation, possible. Um, the conversation, not yet, not yet. You, you've, you've got to get an answer at quarterback until Peyton Thorne. I mean, he's been in this long enough. You show me who you are enough. I'm going to believe you. Not that he's a bad player. I'm not saying Peyton Thorne's a bad player, but he ain't the player. Come on, Jake. You can just say it. He stinks. He's cheeks. Come on, man. Just <laughs> well, look. I, I, again, I, I think just, he's um. Just let it out, Jake. Just let I think it. He's I know you're holding back. I, I, I think he's average, <laughs> right? I think he's a uh, um. Why? Why do you think Hugh Freeze has hitched his wagon to this guy? Why? I couldn't believe Auburn didn't go in the portal, even if they'd have gotten like uh, AJ Swan. Like that would have been at least somebody to push him. Somebody. Um, yeah, I mean, even Hugh Freeze said he didn't really, you know, love the way that, that he handled the, the portal from a quarterback standpoint. Um, you know, look, do I agree with, with just riding with Peyton Thorne? Do I think that that was like the plan the whole time? Um, no, I think they may have missed on a couple guys, to be honest with you, that, that maybe they thought they had that, that didn't come to fruition. Uh, I will always defer to a guy like Hugh Freeze, who I watched take Bo Wallace and beat Bama twice. Um, which that's or just beat Bama with Bo Wallace in general. No, no shot at Bo Wallace, but let's be honest, he's not Cam Newton. Um, I, I'll defer to him, but just with Peyton Thorne, I, I think it's a big risk in year two. I mean, this guy at at some point you got to get out of the cocoon and turn into a butterfly, man. You can't be shaking in the pocket. You know, whenever you go on the road, I mean, you get nervous at Cal. That's when I. That's when I knew. If you really want to know, that's when I, you're over there nervous at Cal. Um. <laughs> Which I mean, I understand if you're nervous for a test, but like not not against not, their football team. Not quite a hostile environment. We'll put it that way. No, no. Not what are they like? All just like chaining themselves <laughs> to pictures and and throwing like paint on stuff. <laughs> if I was Cal, if I was Justin Wilcox, though, why would you not set up? Be like, all right, week one, we're protesting the climate. Everybody show up at the football stadium at this time. You'd sell that thing out. That's yeah. the that's the four D chess play. If I was a head coach like Cal or somewhere like that, like we'd have it, it'd be sold out, but not for the reason they thought. And I would just convince everybody that like they don't believe in it. Like, oh, dude, <laughs> like they do nothing but eat meat and and pump CO two in the atmosphere. <laughs> Jake, biggest question mark that Auburn needs to answer this spring. I know it's just spring ball, obviously, but again, you've been in the building, you've been a coach, you know, spring ball is very, very important. This is where guys start to separate themselves and win jobs. And you obviously hammer down the, the fundamentals, but this is a very, very important time, especially with early enrollees taking the field. And of course, we'll have spring games in about a month. Crazy to think we're only a month away from that. 
the biggest question mark you feel like Auburn needs to address or at least get answered or somewhat answered during spring practice? Well, you, number one, who's the you know who's the backup quarterback going to be? Because I mean, you got to assume Peyton Thorne's going to be the guy, and whoever the backup quarterback is, I think is going to be the guy maybe four or five games into the season. So that's a big deal. But outside of that, um, I would say pass rush. You know, I, that's that's an area where Auburn has to improve, and it's not just being able to get to the guy, but it's being able to get the guy on the ground, and and that's something where Auburn, you know, I thought defensively punched above their weight for a lot of the year. Um, so I, I would say pass rush, and I would say that backup quarterback spot. Um, you know, we can talk about depth up front, you know, a big deal too, Chris is just, man, getting through this, you know, this is a South Carolina fan getting through the spring without losing somebody big up front. Like that's, that's half the battle. You got to, I mean, you look at what happened to South Carolina last year. I mean, you lose what your left tackle set the tone the year set in the spring. Tone. I mean, that's just, yeah. it's not good, man. And, and again, when you're building a program and, and you're trying to develop guys, you got to catch some breaks at, at those positions. And, and that's something I'm going to be looking at a lot. 